Okay. Um, as we start, um, just wanted to remind us about a few verses, a few places where um, you know, Paul exhorts, meaning encourages uh, the church, right? Encourages the believers in this way. So he says, if you notice, some of Paul's writings, right? 1 Corinthians 12, um, and in, in 1 Corinthians, you'll see that many places he says, um, now, brethren, concerning this, I don't want you to be ignorant. Okay? We see that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 also. It says, you know, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep. I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts and so on. Right? So, over and over again comes that those words, I do not want you to be ignorant. Okay, what does it mean to be ignorant? What does it mean when you say ignorant? What is ignorant opposite of? Ignorance opposite is? What does ignorance mean? Knowledge, yeah, knowledge, wisdom, right? So when you say I'm ignorant, which means, see, I don't know. Like, I don't know that information. I don't have that information, right? So, so Paul is saying over and over again, I don't want you to be ignorant about something, which means, you know, right now, uh, I don't want you to remain in that place of not knowing about this subject, of not knowing about this topic, okay? So the the understanding is that God does not want us to be ignorant. He wants us to grow in knowledge. He wants us to grow in understanding. You know, sometimes we think, you know, I know Jesus, and that's all I need to know. It is enough. I want to keep it simple. You know the Lord, I know there's salvation. I want to keep it simple. But when we read through scripture, we see that. Hello, you know, the exhortation. And God does not want us to be ignorant, but to be knowledgeable in in everything. Everything that the scripture talks about, where there is a time and place and a season where God gives us revelation. But the fact is that we need to have that mindset. You know, I do not want to be ignorant. I do not want to you know, not know or be in that state of not being curious or not being knowledgeable. Okay. So I just want to encourage us that. Um, I know this the end of this term. Um, you know whether we continue certain subjects or not. Let us continue to grow in the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the Lord, of His Word, and of the ways of the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. Let's pray. Father, we we thank you for this exhortation that you do not want us to be ignorant, Lord. Father God, we thank you that you want us to grow in our knowledge in our understanding of your word, of your will, of your ways, and about the Holy Spirit. So many things, Lord, you want, to, want us to grow in, Father God. At the same time, being people of childlike faith, trusting in you, depending on you for everything. But Lord, you want us to grow, God. And Lord, we pray that throughout life's journey that we will have that perspective, that we will not be ignorant in anything, that we will, Lord, search your word, even as you lead us by your spirit and take us from a place of ignorance to a place of knowing, God. We thank you, Lord. We pray, Spirit of God, even as we open our hearts to you this morning, we pray that you would speak to our hearts. Um, we pray that, Lord, even as only you can give us revelation and understanding, Lord, we open our hearts to that ministry of the Holy Spirit. We thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' master's name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, um, yeah, let me just share the notes. We've come to the last few uh, topics in our notes. Um, okay. So, um, I hope that's come up.
Yeah. So we're looking at um, today. We're looking at um, the last few topics, <clears throat> and uh, it's about some practical guidelines about financial stewardship, right? So all those practical things. We looked. The last topic that we looked at was investment, right? Um, investment meaning, if God has blessed us with financial blessings, then we use that as part of using it well. Is also to invest in it. Okay, use the money to invest so that there is a return. You get something more than what you have put in, okay? and um, when you when we we looked at we considered several options, right? Like putting it in a bank and also investing in different uh, you know different tools and which are available for us: fixed deposit, recurring deposit, and and so on, right? So uh, whatever works, right? And uh, if you get information uh, on that, you know you can go ahead and do it, right? Okay, so today let's look at work and retirement. Okay, so now when we consider work and retirement, you know, many of us have this understanding that work happened because of the fall, fall of man. Right? We think, okay, man is you know confined or um, you know he's made to work, he's made to till the ground, and by the sweat of his brow he needs to eat. And, and all that, and that all that came after the fall. Yes, it is mentioned after the fall that <clears throat> you know this is the condition, right? But if you look at the scriptures before that, Genesis two verse fifteen and so on, we see that work is something that is instituted by God, right? When He looked at Adam and Eve and um, and He created them, placed them in the garden to tend and to keep it, okay? To to guard, to work. So work is something which is uh, God breathed. Even you can say God created work. Okay? So it's for the good of man, like to be occupied with work. So when we say work, we're looking at various things, right? Ministry is also part of that. Okay? So we, we sometimes we think, you no, know, he's working, but he's in ministry, right? Um, but if you look at it, we do the work of ministry, right? We do the work of an evangelist, right? Uh, and so on. So um, when you look at work, you know all of us are commanded to work, right? work with our hands, and so that we can get something in return, so that we can take care of our needs, and also we can take care of others' needs. Right. So when we say work, we're talking about everything. We're talking about ministry also, the work of ministry as well. Okay. So when we look at um, work, yes, as part of it, God also has given us times of rest. Seasons of rest, so that we can recharge, be refreshed, and work. Okay, so many times what happens is that rest or leisure is seen to be the objective. Now that is not the objective, right? You know, I, I want to just rest. I just, I just want to just take it easy. I just want to don't want to do anything. I just want to. You know, just be on one long holiday, right? Sometimes we we have that, right? Because maybe work is tough, maybe because you know we're looking at all this Instagram posts and people are saying, you know, I'm just traveling from one place to another to another to another, and I'm enjoying life. You know, sometimes we think, oh, I, I wish I could also be like that. You know, I just want, I don't want to work at all. You know, why should I? You know, I just want to reach a place where I just live, be on one full holiday all the time. But if you look at it, God created work. God created us to work. And God also created rest or instituted rest so that we will have times of work and times of resting. So leisure or rest should not be our objective all the time. Okay, should not be saying, I, I'm, you know, how can I rest? Or how can I take it easy? Or how can I you know, uh, not work? That should not be our objective because the whole of our lifetime, we are called. We are called to work, and with that, also have times of resting, which will, which will refresh us, recharge our body and mind, so that we can work. Right. So, um, you know, we God calls us, and along with that call comes the uh, work, the details of the work. Where should I be? What should I do? Uh, what should I, you know, be engaged in, involved in? All that, you know, comes. 
attached to the call, right? The, the kind of call that God has. So we don't need to compare ourselves, uh, but we need to, you know, connect with God and receive that call from Him, right? So God leads us, you know, leads us in seasons to bring us to the fullness of what He wants us to step into in terms of work and uh, in terms of, uh, you know, work and leisure and so on, right? So uh, when it comes to work, yes, there will come a time or we will reach a place in life with regard to age and, you know, capability. We will say, okay, I want to retire. Okay, what does retire mean? Retire means that you, you don't do or you're not intensely involved in work, but you pull back a little because, you know, maybe you've reached an age, physically you're not able or, you know, maybe many years from now, okay? So we need to consider that also. Think about that, okay? Right. So what will help us is some financial planning right now. Okay? It might not be much. We may not be making much money. We may not be receiving much money, but we can think about it, okay? What can I do, right? When I reach that place of retirement, what should I do? Or how should I start investing now so that there can be some some flow of money so that I can take care of retirement years. Okay, Not to fear, but to think and plan. It's always good to do that. right? And God will give us ideas. God will lead you. Okay, okay. next one. Um, you know, this whole thing of net worth. Okay. So, you know, when we look at, uh, a, you know, something, let's say, okay, when you look at your phone, Okay, so how much is it worth? Sorry? 12,000. 12,000 is when you bought it. Okay, but now how much is it worth? Three, four, okay, so three or four thousand. Uh, why? Sorry, you used it. And so if you need to sell it, it will probably be worth 3,000 or 4,000, right? Okay. If it's in good condition and if it's not broken, etc. Okay. So the value of every you know, every product that you have, you know, whether it's a water bottle, whether it's a you know your watch, has a worth. Okay. So how much are you worth? <laughs> right? If you are asked, okay, how much am I worth? Okay. So in financial terms, you know, if you look at it, <clears throat> see, definitely we are worth much in God's eyes. Maybe not in our own estimation, you know, we may not be, you know, we say, I'm not worth much. We might think like that. But we are supposed to look at ourselves through God's eyes and God assigns value and worth because he says he so loved the world that he came, that he gave to redeem. So we know that we are of high value to him. Okay. So, and that value does not go down. Okay, now you said, okay, when I bought it, it was 12,000, now it's three or four. But your value does not go down with God. In his eyes, the value is the same. He loves us the same. Okay? Which is something amazing. That in God's eyes, it is, if it's 12,000, it, it remains 12,000. It does not go down. Just because, you know, you are older or just because whatever reason, right? So our worth remains the same with God. He values us. He values us. He loves us. He cares for us. Okay. But in strictly financial terms, if we were to, in terms of, when I say financial terms, in terms of money and in terms of things that you own, possess, you know, we can calculate how much we are worth. It depends on what is our investment? What is our bank balance? What are the things that I have, possess? You know, is it good to do that? Or is it, and why do we do that? The motive is the thing, you know? Why are we, why do we want to do that? Well, it's good to do that because you can assess and see what, what are the things that we have? What are the blessings that we are enjoying? Okay. It is good to do that in term, in times of, maybe a crisis or maybe if someone is very deep in debt, right? it's good to do that, you know, especially 
when it comes to debt and uh, repayment of debt and if somebody doesn't have any money it's good to assess and see okay what are the assets that we have assets meaning is it their land is there some jewelry is there some so some money that i put away you know something that i it's there hidden away that i forgot about it or maybe we you know put money in some fixed deposit we forgot about that it matured we didn't draw it out something like that right so to consider that and see okay what is the value what is the net worth so that it can be useful for repayment okay so it's good to assess purely in terms of to seeing okay how much god has blessed us we are thankful for that how can we be, be a, we be a blessing to others right and in terms of crisis we it's good to know okay this is so much i have therefore i can i can do this you know i can maybe sell it off i can repay and things like that okay so but net worth is something you need to understand it's, it goes beyond money right not just money but it's the value which god assigns for us okay um so you will see in the market you know in in uh, in the market in the sense of when you read about the, in the papers and you know you see this is a high net worth individual you know this person is valued as so many crores which means that he has so much wealth like right? if he sells off anything everything this is what he will get so you will read that you will see that in the papers and so on but um, you know the thing is that our value is assigned by god we need to understand that our value of every human being cannot be just measured in rupees and paise but it is actually something that is assigned by god but it's good for us to do that exercise to to know ourselves okay to to like i said to see what kind of blessings have we enjoying and uh, how much god has blessed us to be grateful to god okay um yeah i'm not going through all the scriptures mentioned here but um, yeah let's just read um, just one second okay yeah just want to turn to psalm 20 verse 7 okay, it says some trust in chariots and some in horses okay some trust in chariots some in horses okay so what does that talk about it means they are thinking about the two wheelers and four wheelers and what not okay, that's what they are talking about okay i would drive a benz or try drive a you know bmw some trust in horses and some ch chariots but we will remember the name of the lord that's what the psalmist says okay so we will remember the name of the lord it's not that we don't have chariots or horses okay irrespective of whether we have chariots and horses we will remember the name of the lord okay irrespective of whatever worth you know in terms of finances we have but we will remember the name of the lord you know that's the thing which means that we esteem god we know whom we have trusted and these are you know to trust in wealth or riches is you know it's it's not foundational or it's not solid ground but we will trust in the name of the lord okay that's what the psalmist says right yeah, okay let's remember that okay taxes we saw you know tax is something whom do we pay the tax to it goes to the government okay it comes in different ways when you buy some product you know there is a goods and services tax gst which is added to it so we you know of everything there is a the government gets the revenue through taxes if you're working in an organization then there is a you know there's some tax which is deducted this tax deducted at source uh, you know professional tax and so on right so it's tax goes to the government okay now we might we might argue and say okay this government is corrupt government right you might say you know this they have not done anything right look at the road look at the electricity you know like things are so much better now but you know we sometimes we can ask those questions so they have not done anything why should i pay taxes right you go back to times when the lord was ministering on the earth and you think about that government so much more corrupt 
so much more not accountable to anyone, right? What they think is what they did, right? So, at, at such a time, the Lord said, when it came to taxes, to pay what is due. Okay, so we understand that. Okay, if there is a tax, and if it's something that is due to the government, and then we will pay it. Okay, so so when you when you look at okay, let's say you're getting a salary or you're getting whatever tax that needs to be paid, even in ministry, you know, when we look at ministry, let's say you start a church, you you know, there are some there are some guidelines, right? And uh, you will learn more about that in, in the last year, uh, church administration, right? So we see for ministry, we are supposed to be accountable to God, to people, which means the law of the land, right? In So that people will not point fingers, people will not accuse. So when it comes to taxes, you know, we are supposed to pay taxes, okay? So um, never forget that, right? But the government itself gives us some benefits, right? So we, we can find that out. Okay, if we invest in some things, then we don't have to pay so much of a tax, or we don't have to pay a high tax. The tax can be reduced. Okay, and if you are giving to a charitable institution, for example, an NGO, which is doing some good work among poor people, right? So when you are contributing to that, then there is you know, certain uh, in in certain cases. There is what is called, you know, section 80G, you know, it's called. So when you make a contribution, then your tax, the tax that you're due to pay is marginally reduced. Okay, so things like that. So in the West, you know, in the US, I've heard that when people give, contribute to church or any ministry, then that is, you know, uh, they have tax benefits, right? But it's not so in our country. Like in India, those of you who are watching through e-learning, you know, maybe in your country, the, the policies could be different. Uh, you know, there could be some benefits when you contribute to a ministry or church or whatever, or you know, some uh, NGO or non-governmental organizations. But this is how it is. You know, so we can make use of that. Okay, we are not avoiding tax when we do those things. So it is legal, like it is instituted by the government. It's recognized by the government that when you support some good work that is being done um, through these organizations, then there is a reduction in the tax that you need to pay. So we can always do that. You know, and the government gives some, some subsidies like, OK, if you're working in an organization and some amount of money goes to your children's fees, education, right? Uh, then again, there is some kind of a reduction, okay? marginal reductions. You know, these are all small. Things, but then it, all this adds up to to a substantial reduction in tax. So the question is, you know, is it okay to do that or not? Yes, it's okay to do that, right? Because it's recognized by the government and it is legal. Okay, but what is not okay is avoiding totally avoiding payment of tax. Right. So as long as these kind of policies are there, it's okay. We can. Um, we can make use of that in order to reduce our tax, okay? Um, because it's money that we've earned and out of which we are paying taxes. So if there is something, if we need to be, again, aware of this, right? Sometimes we, we are not aware, hey, I can do this. I can probably invest in a, you know, um, let's say there's something called NSC, right? National Savings Scheme, right? In the post office and so on. So you you use that. And then there is some kind of a reduction in the tax. Now, suppose you're investing in NSC. Um, and uh, it's within that financial year. Okay, So it's not like, OK, I invested some three years ago, but I can make use of that information to reduce my tax. No, it's within that financial year. Financial year is um, April of a particular year till the March of next year. In India, it works like that. Right? The finance, some, some countries have a calendar year, January to December, okay, uh, as the financial year, uh, which means all the accounting, all the tax payment and everything needs to be within that. Okay? Whereas for us here in India, um, it's April. Now we are coming to April, 
uh, we are in April, right? So financial year has started 2024 till March of 2025. That's the financial year. Okay. Okay. Life insurance. What do you know about life insurance? Is life insure is is it okay or not? Why is it okay? If it's not okay, why is it not okay? Yeah, I can use the mic. Uh, sorry. When you are taking a life insurance, uh -huh. uh, you need to pay the uh, pay the EMIs and all. Yeah. But pre later, if anything happen, it is a security. At the time when you need it, the money will come. Mm. It's like uh, according to the scheme, what the, the return you will get on the basis you will like. Uh, it's like if uh, it is a health insurance or if it is a life insurance. So uh, according to the terms and all, what uh, kind, how much return you will get mm. by investing in that. So it's like it's beneficial actually. It's okay. necessary you can take it. Mm. So is it lack of faith in God? Oh, it's not like that. It's just uh, planning. Mm. It's just you are planning for your future. That is the thing. Okay. Right. So, um, so yeah. So like yeah. Go ahead. Uh, it's okay to be wise and uh, take a life insurance, but it is not okay to be completely reliant on that and overly insure yourself. Mm. Yeah, like we saw in Psalm 20 verse 7, you know, this again, it, it extends to all these things. You know, we are we're not putting our faith and trust and life in this one thing. But our trust is in God, our hope is in Him, right? But this is something that you can plan when you take when you say life insurance, okay, it is some amount of money, you take a policy, and some amount of money which is paid, sometimes it's monthly, sometimes it's once in six months, or sometimes it's annual. Okay, and that amount that you pay, or sorry, pay, is called a premium, insurance premium. Right? So you pay that. Then what happens? You know, this for an extended period of time. So every year you keep paying, and it has a maturity date. Okay? Maybe 15 years, maybe 20 years. It depends. So there is a maturity. So at the end of the maturity date, there is a payment which comes. Let's say something happens, okay? This means the Lord invites you to go up, okay? Or maybe some kind of you're martyred for you know, working for the kingdom. What happens is the people whom you nominated in the policy, right? Saying these are the beneficiaries. You know, if something happens to me, then my wife, my children, or my brother. My sister, you know, whatever it is, you know, these are the beneficiaries of it. So all they need to do is take that policy. So which means that we need to inform our family or inform the beneficiaries. Hey, there is such a policy, right? In the event of anything happening, you can actually access it. You can go to the company from which the policy was taken, show the policy, show the proof of death, which means death certificate, right? And the benefit of that policy comes to your family, okay? which is a good thing, right? Now, if you look at uh, Elisha and uh, what happened then, you know, we see that the widow, you know, we don't know why they came to that place of uh, debt. We don't know, right? Maybe the, this is one of the prophets, right, who passed away. So we don't know what, how they ended up in debt, but it was a difficult situation. Now the prophet is not there. Now the widow is there and the children are there and they are, they have to repay the debt. And it's a, it's a difficult situation because she's saying the, the creditors are coming. You know, they will come to take away. So we don't have anything. And then, God intervenes and they are able to pay back. So this insurance is something that, that would help in the event of something happening, okay, then the beneficiaries, which is our family members, they are taken care of. Okay. Well, there are some people who say, you know, for me, I don't want to take life insurance policy. Like there are some people who say that, and I know some people who say that. No, no insurance policy doesn't matter. Whatever happens, let it happen. Kind of thing. You know, fine. We respect their choice, but this is something that is available for us. It doesn't mean that I 
I don't have faith in God. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, I don't trust Him to keep my life, to save my life. No. But it's also possible, you know, there are too many factors. It's also possible that, yes, something could happen. And in the event of that, no, it's not in the not in the knowledge of God, not in the, you know, without God knowing. No, God knows it. Right? But something happens and the family is taken care of. Okay. So insurance, we have life insurance, we have, like Saga said, there's health insurance, etc., which can actually benefit us. Right. So um, you know, when we come to a place of or when we reach a place of maybe some kind of a income, steady income then we can consider this, right? We can consider this. And uh, I believe there are some, some, you know, some policies where you pay one rupee, some, you know, some, something. They made it very e easy, right? Um, even if you book a train ticket on, on your app, you get, right, uh, 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 health insurance for that journey, right? And it, it's some one rupee or two rupees for that particular journey, okay? And... You mention who are your beneficiaries and so on. So, yeah, it is it is useful in that sense. Okay, so you know, think about it. That is something for us to um, um, plan. Okay, ensuring uh, life, uh, ensuring a life, health, and so on. Okay, two two more things, okay. <clears throat> which is transfer of wealth in a sense. Okay, the the Bible talks about that we leaving an inheritance for others. Others meaning. You know, your, your children, probably, family, leaving an inheritance. Now, it doesn't say, you know, you need to leave so much. It has to be lakhs and lakhs or crows and crows. But whatever it is, right? It says a good man leaves an inheritance for children and children's children, like two generations, right? So it doesn't specify the money. Okay? So it, this is something that we can also think about, right? After I go, after I pass away, Something of a physical nature, financial nature, right? Something that is an asset, maybe which can be left, which can be given to our family, right? So that it can be like a something that will bless them, something that takes care of their needs. Okay, so so that is what we mean by you know something that is planned and a, a transfer of wealth. Okay, and this also. The planning for that is during our lifetime. Okay, we, we plan and say, okay. So so what are we doing? We are actually thinking ahead and saying, okay, I'm putting away this so that after I'm gone, it can be a blessing to my spouse or my children or whoever else. You know. And it it really um, helps us. So it's it's again comes under the purview of being a good steward. Okay, God has blessed me this, so I want to. You know, steward this well. You know, some people have been so generous, right? So, um, some people, you know, write a will or leave their entire wealth to maybe an educational institution, maybe an orphanage, right? Maybe a ministry, right? Something that they have been blessed with, or something that they see there is a need, and so they pass it on, right? So, yeah. It's a small observation. In the recent past, uh, there are quite a few of them, you know, who are uh, in a different uh, level of riches and, uh, uh, you know, uh, extreme wealth, like of, uh, uh, you can call them uh, from... Philanthropists. Like, uh, yes, philanthropist or uh, uh, royal family. And they choose to forego everything and then everything means absolutely everything. And then they just walk away to something. What's your take on that? Um... So they choose to give it away to society, give it away to someone. Mm -hmm. They choose to. Uh, yeah, there could be many reasons, you know. Maybe they're sick and tired of it. Maybe they want to bless others. But in any case, it's a noble gesture, right? Um, yeah. But sorry, sorry. Cases the intent is also to attain salvation by, uh, you know. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So maybe they. Okay, they are pursuing uh, austere life, yes. life devoid of all that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, so the motive so that could be a wrong motive. Yeah. So the motive also matters. Uh, like they are sincere in their attempt to do this. They are sincere. They just want to, you know, give away. Um, and sometimes they do it uh, because they think that 
for them it will be something that will benefit them like attaining moksha or whatever you know and uh, you know leaving behind such a life and and we know of some people who did that right uh, mahavir jain uh, gautama buddha you know all those people who did that and it was in pursuit of something the pursuit of spiritual en enlightenment and they felt that this was in this was hindering and so they said you know well the motive is this we need to appreciate the sincerity and also see that hey, they have a hunger which goes beyond wealth a spiritual hunger um, i mean we can appreciate that <laughs> but uh, and if possible you know guide so that's the thing but uh, yeah obviously this is going to help someone right but whether they are being helped is is a question that's the thing yeah right okay so again transfer of wealth it's uh, it's something that we can think of right think of and plan ahead okay. um then the last thing is that um, when it comes to the next generation okay when it comes to the next generation suppose you know there is you're leaving behind you know whatever wealth or whatever it could be land house whatever they should know how to handle it right how to handle it meaning not just spend it but they should know how to use it well right so when it comes to the next generation when it comes to children you know maybe grandchildren they need to be trained you know we see again over and over again the need for the next generation to know what we know and even more when it comes to money you know like for example in um in our family we never talked about money okay we never talked about money in the sense uh hey, what we should do with money or you know these are the options that are available right we never talked about it at a young age you know it was always don't talk about it it was always something like a taboo okay We're sitting around and talking don't talk about money no no forget it no, that's all big people they will talk elders no you why why do you want to know suppose you ask how much is my fees school fees why do you want to know right so leave it to the elders but the thing is that children need to know and right? not to burden them but they need to know how money functions right? they need to know what how to use money how to how not to abuse money right they need to know the right perspective all the things that we've looked at that god is the god who provides that god is not against money right but we need to be careful there could be hindrances to receiving you know the the very things the blessing that god wants to give there could be hindrances and our own motive and our own attitude could be a hindrance right or our ignorance of it and we they they need to know that there is a real enemy who comes to steal kill and destroy right we read in malachi that he is a devourer so all these principles they need to know and they need to know right from a young age okay i know of a father in our in our church right i know of a father who actually has like one hour teaching sessions okay every saturday like if not all saturdays right saturdays he takes time to teach these children now the children are teenagers they are one is in the last year of school the other one is in college and but he takes time to teach them so this is these are options this is how you can say this is how you can you know sometimes we wish i wish somebody told us right uh, when we are younger but that is something which is necessary like we teach them everything like we teach them how to cook we teach them how to ride up you know vehicle we teach them okay they go we want to want them to get a good education etc and about this also about money we need to teach them only then when you leave something behind they will be able to use it well okay use it well meaning not just hold it and keep it for themselves or not spend everything away but really be a good steward of it okay so we need to um, there needs to be some kind of a uh, training equipping because if wealth is left it will just go through right they will not know what to do with it either they'll be too scared to spend it too careful 
so that they won't use it anywhere or they won't know the value of it because it was given to them, right? It was given to them one day, it's a huge amount. Oh, wow, they get excited. I can spend it on this, that, and the other, right? And it's all gone, right? So when we're saying, you know, to the next, when we say to the next generation, of course, they will be adults when this wealth comes into them, right? As an inheritance or something that comes to them. They will be adults, but if they are not trained as children, then they will not have the right perspective. Okay? And training also would mean, what does the word of God, what does God think about money in their lives? Like they need to know that, the biblical perspective of finances. Okay? Um, and, you know, sometimes I remember while growing up, the constant thing that I heard, right, from my parents over and over again, hey, we are poor. I don't know if you have heard it. We are poor. We cannot afford it. You know, so don't try to be like the other people. Be careful. Don't try to be like the other people. We are poor. We cannot afford it. So I grew up hearing this. I'm poor. I cannot afford. I'm poor. I'm, I cannot afford. Now, while it could be reality, yes, we are poor, we cannot afford all these things. That's a, that's a fact, right? But the truth is that we worship a God and to Him belongs the cattle on a thousand hills, the gold and the silver, they are His. And He is the one who gives generously without holding back. And He is Jehovah Jireh. Okay, so that aspect also, you know, we need to know. Right? So the fact is this. Okay, today we cannot afford this. Tomorrow, maybe we cannot afford this. But that is not the final resting place. That is not the final destination. We are on a journey. God will take us. God will bless us. But, you know, you have the right thing on money. Let not money hold you, but you hold it. Right? You control it. So that we need to know as children. So it, could, it is just it is a mindset as well. Right? Not just skill and information about the money market or you know saving schemes, not just that, but also this mindset, right? Okay, okay. With that, we come to an end or the end of this course. Um, any questions? Anything? Just, uh, yeah. A couple of closing questions. Uh, first of all, uh, how much of hindrance do money plays? in the role in our ministry life, one. And the second one is uh, the challenges that people go through ministry. Is it in, in areas of finance? Is it because God is teaching us to depend more on him? Or is it because of the poor choices he or she has actually made? Sorry, what is this? Eh? The last line? Uh, the challenges that people go through ministry in yeah. the areas of finance. Yeah. Is it because God is choosing, uh, teaching us to be more dependent on Him, mm. or is it because of the poor choices He or she has made mm. during? Yeah, yeah. So, first question is, um, how much of a hindrance uh, does money really play in our lives, or uh, is that sorry? As of ministry, Master. Oh, in case of ministry. In ministry life. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, see, ministry or work or otherwise. Uh, we need money to function. That is a that is a reality. Okay, but money should have its right place in the ministry. One, we cannot be like in, in denial, saying, "Okay, I don't need money to work or, I, or or to do the work of ministry." Every small thing requires right finances. So that's the reality of it. But where is your heart at? What is God asking you to do? So that's the thing, right? Um, so, because if we are going to keep our focus on money, we are going to keep our focus on the need. Okay, The need is there. But if we are focused only on the need, focus only on the money, that we are not focusing on the one who takes care of that need, one who wants to provide for the need. Okay, So we need to have you know, the right perspective in the sense that, yes, I know this is the need, this is the reality. So which means you need to be, you know, you need to know the state of affairs. You know, what are the bills to be paid? What is the monthly expense, daily expense? What is it that we need to function or you know 
daily as a ministry. We need to know. We need to know the reality of it. And over and above that, we need to know that who is the one who takes care of our needs. So that should be there. Third thing is, what do I need to do now? Right? What is God leading me to do? Yes. Um, you know, the way God has designed church and ministry is that people who are blessed give to the work of ministry. But we also see it as a, you know, as a, what do you call it, a bivocational thing where Paul worked with his hands, provided for the needs of ministry of his, himself and for his team. And people also gave. So we see that in Paul's life. Okay, so we know that it's a scriptural framework. So, um, so what is God leading me to do? Is he, has he graced me, anointed me to be in the marketplace? Question, you know, according to this call of being a minister, has he graced me to be in the marketplace so that that can be an avenue of provision for the ministry? Right? So it, it all comes down to that. Because if we if you've not thought about these, we're not prayed about these things, and we could be in a wrong place and saying, you know, I'm living by faith, whereas you know, we've just ignored the prompting of the spirit, the leading of the spirit. We just shut out saying, you know, I want to live by faith, and then then we're struggling, and then we get hurt, we get angry with God, angry with people, and then we come to a place of burnout and say, I don't want anything to do with ministry. Okay, so so that's the thing. So it can be, um, you know, when it comes, it can be a challenge, right? When our focus is not right. So we need to be real, not live in denial, but also know that God has called us to do maybe a list of things and be faithful to that. So that's the thing. Yeah. And the second one is um, about, sorry, can I repeat that? Uh, what? Uh, when people go through challenges in ministry life, yeah. It... So why? So again, you know, that's the thing. You know, when when we, let's say a church borrows, takes a loan as a trust, takes a loan, then the focus is on repayment, and that is monthly with interest. And so, so well, I'm not saying that it you cannot do it, but uh, do it with the right heart. You know, so which means that you're going to put unnecessary pressure on people in order to get, in order to pay, because there's no other source, right? Be careful of all that. Be mindful of all that, um, and uh, and and that's the thing. And it could also it's a mix of that also. You know, uh, the choices that we make, we, like we saw, you know, it is it is the choice. It is the motive, which can be an hindrance also. Right. So is God teaching me a lesson? <laughs> well, God, we know, primarily teaches us through His Word and the Spirit. So that's God's way of teaching. God's way of teaching a lesson. He doesn't take my hand. Put it in the fire, right? And say, see, that is fire, it burns. No, no, no. That's not God. That's not the way of teaching of any earthly father. So, how much more our heavenly father? He's not going to break my hand and say, okay, this is how a fracture feels, so you be careful. No. But my choice lead me to those consequences, to those, you know. Uh, but then the Lord is redemptive. Despite that, he still teaches. He wants me to be back on my feet uh, so that I can complete the race that he's called me to run. One yeah. Last question, Pastor. Sure, sure. Uh, is it okay, like when you uh, to do your ministry in whichever area God has called you, and to run your business or to do something so that you support your ministry without being dependent on people? I'm not yeah. talking in reference to being dependent on God. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. It depends on the nature of ministry as well you know because uh, i like i know of people and we see the scriptural example of you know like paul for example in the new testament who who did the work of ministry and you know was gainfully in this business uh, you know of tent making so that's why you know we said tent maker you know that kind of thing of people who do their work and then support them so, yeah and also you know known people uh, so the nature of ministry is is that you know I know a person who who's passed away now who worked in Chennai Port Trust right so in the, in the harbor and as an engineer and all through his life from the time God called him till he re retired you know he he worked that way he will work weekends he will minister 
and he was the work of an evangelist. So weekends he will travel. But tough. Saturday, Sunday, he travel, he'll be preaching somewhere. But everything he will take care of. You know, his travel and his stay and everything will come from his, you know, own thing. So that's something he said, God called me to do this and I will do it. So it's perfectly fine. Just be sure. Right? Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. So with that, we come to an end of this course. Um, please do go through the notes again, check through it, and let it stay in our hearts, right? Uh, at least the br broad concepts um, or the broad things that we looked at, the principles, let it um, stay with us so that we can, our life can change accordingly, right? Okay. Um, okay. Sanjay's question is when will we get our final assignment? Yeah. So it will be this week, um, Sanjay. So this week we are on the seventeenth, yeah. So it'll be this week, the second uh, quiz, right? Uh, E-learning students also uh, around the same time, right? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, hope to meet you all next semester. God bless. See you guys. <laughs>